<laughs> okay, uh, my name is uh, Yanis Theoharis, uh, and uh, I will talk about ocular movements and uh, related stress on the posterior pole as the operative event of uh, macular diseases. Okay, uh, the eye is the most mobile part of the body, and we calculate about a billion uh, movements during our first uh, 15 years. Uh, the macula and the posterior pole is a multi-layer system that lies between the optic nerve and the insertion of the inferior oblique mu uh, muscle, and that uh, it's in close proximity to uh, its uh, contractile forces. Uh, are there consequences uh, uh, because of that on the posterior pole? Do ocular movements cause structural deformation of the macula? Or could structural deformation explain the changes we see in OCT images in macular diseases? We designed a prospective study and we measured the center of fovea thickness of the retina and the corresponding choroid at primary and temporal eye positions. We recorded the strains of the posterior pole uh, in both positions, and we found uh, that uh, the center of fovea thickness changes uh, significantly from primary to temporal gates, and, uh, all, uh, and the choroidal uh, thickness as well. We also detect uh, rotational movements of the layers of the posterior pole, and even in, in some cases, we detected uh, a deformation of the uh, foveal avascular zone. We know that the layers, the tissues of the posterior pole, um, have biomechanical properties that vary uh, uh, through individuals and also changes by age. Our hypothesis is that the stress, the repetitive strains due to ocular movements, um, uh, cause material failure, uh, folding, and detachment, and uh, in conjunction with that, uh, with the fact that uh, mechanical stimulation of uh, pigment epithelium, for example, uh, triggers uh, VEGF secretion, maybe this is a common pathway to uh, explore the drusen formation, AMD, Brook cracks, pachycoroidal secondary lesions, myopic maculopathy, macular horror, and retinal membranes, uh, among others. In our way to that, to that we created a finite element a model of a slice of posterior pole. We set the biomechanical properties from the literature and set our own boundary conditions. And we went to the structural analysis, volume and total deformation analysis of, the, of this slice during ocular movements. Uh, we were able to create a, a posterior vitreous detachment actually without any contractile forces from uh, the vitreous body. Uh, we were also able to create macular rupture, what we call macular hole, uh, uh, due to ocular movement uh, without contractile forces as well. And uh, also we observed that uh, small uh, detachments, especially between retina and the uh, Brook membranes, uh, were formed uh, uh, during uh, our uh, model testing. Uh, another interesting observation was that when we removed the ILM and cortex uh, uh, structures, then uh, the deformations uh, was uh, transferred to more, much more deeper layers, such as, as, such as the choroid and the sclera. In geology, the earth crust uh, shares similar characteristics with uh, the posterior pole as a multi-layered uh, uh, structure. Uh, uh, we found uh, structures that uh, resemble uh, very much with what we see in, uh, in uh, various macular diseases in uh, OCT B scans. There are the salt uh, domes that are formed uh, underneath the, uh, the layer structures uh, have a, a convex uh, or a concave and salt tooth uh, shapes according to, uh, to the uh, the way that they were formed uh, by passive uh, sedimentation, shortening, or extension. Strikingly, uh, the ultrastructure shape of the drusen uh, are, have the same shapes. Uh, so it's a convex, concave, so tooth as uh, a recent study saw. 
So we assume that uh, uh, Drusen, uh, with the cocaine form, uh, uh, is crea are created by passive sedimentation. Uh, excuse me. Uh, compression and shortening or rotational movements of the layers of the posterior pole. So, um, the deposition of material alone cannot explain the morphology of uh, Drusen. So, shortening and allocation, compression and extension uh, participate in the Drusen formation. And uh, uh, an amorphous lipid and protein layer behaves as fluid when examined during long time periods. Uh, forming a Drusen or Drusenoid the deposit is our hypothesis. And actually the, the flowage of the, of the material is towards the low pressure uh, detachments or uh, density differences. And uh, this is actually, uh, uh, there is uh, a confirmation of uh, electron biomicroscopy of the existence of this uh, film of the, they call it, uh, uh, other uh, basal laminar uh, deposits or uh, a microdrusen film that uh, is as a precursor of the drusen uh, formation. Uh, so the shape of drusen and uh, the drusenoid deposits may help us reveal how do they grow, uh, probably how to prevent them, prevent them from growing, or at least how to direct them to grow away from the uh, from the macula. So maybe a structural deformation and ocular movements may give a unifying pathogenetic mechanism for a lot of blinding diseases in the macula. Thank you.